The Camino de Santiago is a network of different pilgrimages, all leading to a city in Galicia, Spain, called Santiago de Compostela. Why? Well, this city is set to house the remains of a Catholic saint, St. James, in its 1,000-year-old cathedral. It has a long, storied history, starting as a Roman trade route. In 1492, Pope Alexander VI officially declared the route to be one of the three great pilgrimages of Christendom, along with Jerusalem and Rome. In the Middle Ages, one could earn something called an indulgence for completing the Camino. This was a document promising to reduce the amount of punishment one has to undergo for sins. It acquired the nickname La Voie Lactée, French for the Milky Way, because the night sky seemed to point the way. Now, the Camino entices over 300,000 people a year, people from all walks of life, to its network of trails. People undertake the journey for various reasons. These reasons vary from just doing a hike to deeply personal or spiritual. Part of completing the Camino is collecting stamps. Yeah, the passport can be purchased at your country's St. James Confraternity, or in many cases, the church you begin the route at. You can collect stamps in it along the way at a variety of locations, including albergues, churches, and restaurants. If you collect the right amount of stamps, you can get a cool pilgrim's completion certificate at the end of your hike. In undertaking the Camino Portuguese route, you'll start at either the Lisbon or Porto Cathedral. We had about two weeks, so we decided to walk from Porto. If you start at Lisbon, give yourself at least a month from start to finish. Within the Portuguese way, you also have three further options. Take the coastal way, the inland, or the littoral route. We use a website called Stingy Nomads. They have a great amount of information about the Camino, and we use their itinerary as a start. I'll link it in the description below. In the next part of the video, I'll outline the itinerary we followed while giving information about weather, people, food, prices in general, and options for accommodation. Here we are at the start of our trip in Faro. We got in a little bit of beach time before visiting Lisbon and then traveled to Porto to start the Camino at the cathedral. Day one is a lot of road walking as you exit Porto. As a general rule, the coastal route is way marked. Technically, we took the littoral way out of Porto, sticking as close as we could to the ocean. Later in the day, you'll come to boardwalks, which we welcomed as it's much easier on the feet. Boardwalks and road will characterize the next few days as you walk next to the beach. We brought our tent and opted to use it the first night, as Le Bruge has a campsite. But there are albregue options. There are, in general, two ways to walk the Camino in terms of accommodation. You can get away most of the time from albergue to albergue without having to book ahead. And for many, this is an essential feature of the Camino. The idea that you can get up and walk as far as you want to and find a roadside accommodation when you're tiring out. In theory, you don't need an itinerary. I think this is a great way to do the Camino, and I highly recommend it. One thing I would recommend if you choose this method is that you get up and start hiking early to ensure less hassle for securing an albergue later in the day. There was only one time when we were turned away due to no vacancies, but this was a unique situation which I will cover later in the video. On day three, we made it to Fao, 
and we actually took a rest day here. After all, we were on vacation and wanted to make sure we took time to enjoy ourselves. We stayed in a small caravan on Fowl's campsite the first night, and then a place called Spot Hostel the second night. By the way, Fowl's worth visiting just for these things called clarinas from this shop. Say hello to Pedro for us if you make it there. On day six, we traveled to Carreso. As we made it through welcoming forest trails, we could hear distant drums. As we made tracks, they slowly became louder. We decided to stop off at a cafe a little ways off the path. As we sat there, it soon became clear what was making the noise. So, we've got a new cat. Pet cat this cat just won't stop following us. His name is Pedro. I'm hoping that he doesn't stray too far from home. I'm not sure if he's a stray or... But he just won't stop following us and we just can't get away from him. Hopefully he has an owner in the area. <laughs> Pedro ended up latching onto another hiker and we lost him after a short hike. We still miss that little fella to this day. Oh no, 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 it's gone down by 40 minutes. <laughs> Cup tea? Cup tea? 
aspects of road and forest walking. It was here, about three hours hike from Bayona, where we lost our drone to a tree branch. We spent about an hour throwing sticks up at it to dislodge it, eventually being successful, but it was damaged in the process. Sadly, we put it away for the rest of the trip. We stayed two days in Bayona to take a bit of a rest. The only downside to taking a rest is losing some of the connections you make with hikers along the way. Hiking the Camino, you will inevitably meet some amazing like-minded people who you end up hiking with, sometimes for multiple days. We couldn't have picked a better spot to explore. Bayona has a lot to offer, boasting a castle, multiple beaches, and an old town district. Fun fact, on March 1st, 1493, the Pinta, one of the ships from Columbus's voyage to the New World, returned to Europe and arrived in Bayona, making the town's port the first to receive news of the discovery of America. After 250 kilometers and 14 days of hiking, we were getting close to our destination. On day 15, we arrived at Santiago de Compostela. Meandering through crowds, we made it to the finish line, the cathedral. We ended up staying a further four days in Santiago and explored everything the town had to offer. While we were in Santiago, we opted to stay at a campsite called Camping as Cancelas, since we had our tent. This was the cheapest option coming in at 15 euros a night for both of us, although you could find an albergue for about 20 euros a night per person. Thanks for watching. If you liked the video, remember to like and subscribe as it really helps us make more of these. I think I'm ready for the next adventure. Yeah. <laughs>